Samsung finally launched a new SSD in their Evo series that is meant to replace their four-year-old 970 Evo Plus. And that means that this new 990 Evo is supposed to be their new affordable slash mid-range NVMe SSD that is nicely positioned under their high-end 990 Pro. So let's see what they put together here. Let's see how it performs, how much it actually costs and whether you should buy it or not. Let's begin. The 990 EVO is available in a 1TB and 2TB capacities, and I have both of those right here. There is no mention of anything smaller than 1TB, and there is no mention of a possible 4TB version either. It is pretty much a standard 2280 SSD, and there are no heatsink versions available, so you just get the drive with the typical Samsung graphene sticker that is meant to disperse a little bit of heat, and Samsung claims that the sticker should be just enough to keep it cool, but I'm gonna talk more about that a bit later in this video. The 990 EVO uses Samsung's own TLC memory and a new controller called uh, the Piccolo. It doesn't have any DRAM cache included, and it is using host memory buffer or HMB for caching instead. Now I know that this will raise some questions but keep in mind that uh, recent HMB drives like the WD SN 770 and the SN 580 uh, have showed us all that they can compete really well with other drives and they very often cost much less. Now another thing that stands out is the fact that while this is primarily sold as a PCIe Gen 4x4 SSD it is actually able to function as a PCIe Gen 5 by two drive as well. Now you shouldn't expect extreme sequential read and write speeds like we've seen on proper high-end Gen 5 drives because the numbers they list don't even push the limit of a Gen 4 slot. But for situations where Gen 5 is an option and you're limited by the number of lanes, the 990 EVO might be interesting. Now, I honestly cannot really think of many situations where that might be the case, but Samsung pointed out that for Intel's 15th Gen Lunar Lake based systems, uh, this might be useful. So uh, I guess we'll see it then. You do get a five year long warranty, which is typical in the mid range and high end segment. And you get a total bytes worth in value of 600 terabytes per terabyte capacity, which again is fairly typical even for a higher end drive. Now, as usual, Samsung is highlighting support for various kinds of encryption, if that matters to you. And that is definitely something that many other manufacturers still do not specifically mention. Anyway, uh, let's get to some test data and just like in every other SSD video so far, I'm going to start with the PCMark 10 Quick Benchmark, which is a nice package of different tests that simulate a lot of simple little things we do uh, with our PCs every single day. So uh, working with documents, uh, opening your vacation photos, for example, loading games and so on. And this is a very, very useful benchmark to look at if you're looking for a secondary drive or an extra drive for your PC for those simple little tasks. And the 990 EVO starts out really well. The SN580 and the SN770 already showed us that HMB-based drives can do really well in this test, and Samsung does that as well. The 2TB version is only just behind the fastest Gen 4 drives like the 990 Pro and the Crucial T500, which means it managed to beat a lot of other high-end drives. Now, proper Gen 5 drives are ahead here, but uh, those at the top will generally cost you way more. The 1TB 990 EVO is a little bit behind the 2TB version, but it still performs really well, ending up close to the SN580 and the SN770, which still puts it above most high-end drives with or without DRAM cache. But let's move on to the full PC Mark 10 suite, uh, which is a test that simulates a bit more serious, more intense, and definitely more constant use of the drive. So this is a great test to look at if you're looking for a new main drive or if you need to run uh, some applications that can be very heavy on your SSD. And here, the 990 EVO does extremely well too. Both the one and the two terabyte version ended up only just behind the 990 Pro and the P41 Platinum, and the only other Gen 4 drive that is significantly ahead of them is the Crucial T500. But everything else, including the SN850X, KC3000, and many other high-end drives, score worse when you're testing on a high-end system like the one I use for testing. And it also puts it way ahead of its predecessor, which doesn't really hold up that well in 2024. Looking at the latency, it is pretty much in line with the previous results, so with the 990 EVO really keeping up well uh, with the very top of the graph. 
The consistency test is not that relevant for a lot of you because it simulates a very extreme and very intense and long uh, multi-hour workload that most of you will probably never ever do, but it is still good to see how a drive holds up when you really stress it for such a long time. And it is also great to see how SSDs perform uh, once you really push past the caching capabilities of these fast modern controllers. And this is where the 990 EVO really starts to struggle. Now, both capacities aren't anywhere near the top anymore, and the one terabyte version is barely above the old Samsung 980 at the bottom of the graph. Uh, both are also getting beaten by the four-year-old 970 EVO Plus, uh, which is a drive that wasn't even close to them in previous tests. Now, keep in mind that none of the DRAM-less drives do well in this test, but the uh, one terabyte SN770 and the SN 580, for example, did hold up much better than the 990 EVO. 3 d Mark Storage Benchmark is another bundle of various tests that simulate a lot of gaming-related tasks, so things like loading games, uh, installing your games, uh, moving game folders around, recording your gameplay, and so on. And as you might have guessed, uh, this is a very useful benchmark if you're looking for an SSD that you want to use primarily for gaming. And here we see them near the top yet again, just beating the SN580 and the SN770, beating the 990 Pro, and again, only leaving a couple of high-end Gen 4 drives above them. And if we just look at the gaming result that I personally find uh, most important, which is uh, loading times, installing games, and updating games. Uh, both capacities ended up scoring about 82% of the Crucial T500, which is the fastest Gen 4 drive I've tested so far when it comes to gaming. So if the price is right, the 990 EVO could be a very interesting SSD for a game library. Sequential read and write performance numbers don't really represent proper real-life use as well as previous benchmarks do, uh, but it can still be a very useful metric for some of you. And as we've seen in the specs, the 990 EVO doesn't really stand out here. It doesn't get near the limit of a Gen 4x4 SSD in our sequential write testing, and if you're running the sequential tests a bit longer, copying hundreds of gigabytes, you will see those numbers drop down even further. So these drives are not really great for any type of sustained write tasks. In sequential reads, it does get a little bit better, around 5,000 megabytes per second, just beating the SN580, but it is still just an acceptable result at best. Now, if you were considering this for a PlayStation 5 use, uh, my advice is to buy something else. Uh, the fact that it doesn't meet Sony's recommended sequential read speed in itself doesn't really matter as much, but SSDs cannot use HMB caching in a PlayStation at all, so uh, you should buy something that has a DRAM cache instead. In terms of temperatures, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Samsung kind of stated that these drives are made not to throttle and that the heat spreader sticker on top of them should be more than enough, which kind of goes with the Gen 5x2 compatibility for laptops where a big heatsink is usually not an option. Now, they specifically claim that it won't overheat when doing sequential write operations, uh, which is definitely true as the temperatures were typically only in the mid 60s while doing sequential writes, but seeing that this drive isn't that great when it comes to sequential writes, that whole statement doesn't really feel like a meaningful claim. Also, when any brand makes a very specific claim like uh, no thermal throttling during sequential write operations, uh, you do start wondering why they use specific words like that because it kind of leaves the door open for non-sequential write operations. And depending on the tests you run, it is actually completely possible to get these drives uh, to show very high temperatures and very quickly. On an open test bench without a heatsink or extra airflow, the SSD sensors reported temperatures of well over 100 degrees uh, when running the PC Mark 10 consistency test, with the FLIR camera showing almost 100 degrees on the spot where the controller sits. And keep in mind, this is only a few minutes after starting the test. Now, that isn't really unusual, and Samsung could even argue that these temperatures are within their specs and they're not really a problem per se, but I think putting such a marketing emphasis on a tiny little heat spreader as being an effective cooling solution 
is a little bit much considering these results. So in my opinion, yes, you will be completely fine without an extra heatsink in some very regular workloads, but I would absolutely put it under a heatsink if you're in a position to do so, and uh, you will need one if you want to push this drive a little bit harder. And if your motherboard doesn't come with a heatsink for some reason, uh, you can always buy a very basic uh, third-party heatsink from Amazon for just a couple of euros or a couple of dollars that will be more than enough. Now, I will put some recommendations in the description down below, so if you happen to need one, you can check that out. But one area where I do prefer Samsung SSDs over others is their software support. Now, Samsung is one of the few brands where their software actually looks and feels modern. Uh, it has all the relevant functionality for an SSD, plus they have been uh, most consistent with firmware updates over the years. Now, generally, software just feels like an afterthought for most SSD manufacturers, but Samsung is definitely the exception here. So overall, I do think the 990 EVO is an interesting drive and a very nice step up from the 970 EVO Plus for most use cases. Uh, the lack of DRAM means it's not going to be for everyone and the mediocre sequential performance means it's not going to be great for any task that requires it. But uh, just like the SN580 and the SN770, the 990 EVO shows that these modern host memory buffer SSDs can really make a lot of sense in a lot of use cases. So in light to medium all around use or as an extra gain drive, uh, the 990 EVO does really well and it often outperforms even high-end DRAM based drives. So they can be very, very interesting if the price is right. But unfortunately, uh, like we usually see with most Samsung products and we always see with uh, Samsung SSDs, uh, their launch prices make absolutely no sense at all. So the 990 EVO is currently selling for more than the 990 Pro costs and I cannot think of a single reason why you would ever want to spend so much money on one of these drives. Now the price really needs to go down by a lot to what SN580 and SN770 cost and I get a small premium would make sense because it's a bit faster but the 990 EVO should definitely save you a significant amount compared to the 990 Pro and now it actually costs more. So right now with these prices you should not buy these drives but it is still worth keeping an eye on them because Samsung does lower the price a lot over time and eventually they will settle down to what they should have cost at the start. So as always, uh, when you're looking to buy an SSD, just check the actual prices in your region before making a decision. Uh, that's all I have for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Thank you all for watching and sticking to the end. Uh, I hope this video was interesting and helpful enough. If you liked it and you want to see more videos like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. I'm actually preparing a few very interesting roundups that should go live very soon. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!